This looks really yummy. I'm a stress eater, so whenever I'm stressed out or something, I eat. I hate my body so much, and I feel like I'm drowning in my fat. Food has just a grasp on me. I think I lean on food more than I did substances because when I eat food, I don't think about the substances. I'm trying to tell you I need help, but I want it. Lying need to stop now. Send me back home. Send me back home. In this 600 LB Life episode, Stephen got booted from Rhode Island Hospital for ordering pizza when trying to get weight loss surgery. His dad, desperate to get him help, decides against taking him home, fearing it would be Stephen's end. So they hit the road, hoping for a miracle. Let's see how his story unfolds. An 800-pound man from Cranston desperate for help after he says Rhode Island Hospital told him to leave. For the past 80 days, Stephen was getting the help he needed at Rhode Island Hospital. But after Stephen violated his care plan by ordering pizza, Stephen said the hospital told him he could no longer stay. Stephen's father says taking his son home will be a death sentence. So the two men say they'll continue to drive until they find a place that can help. I just don't know where to turn to. I called everybody, everybody you can think of in the state of Rhode Island, and nobody can help me. So it seems like Stephen has no one wanting to help him. And Dr. Now, being the kindest and most helpful doctor, decided to help Stephen and called them to Houston. But even Dr. Now knew he was in for a ride with Stephen, labeling him one of the toughest cases ever. But will Stephen be committed enough to follow his rules? Stephen Asante is being transported to my care in Houston right now, and I'm not sure what to expect. From what I understand, he suffers from severe psychological issues that make it problematic to treat him. So he's going to be a unique case. This looks really yummy! <laughs> You might be thinking about how he gained all the weight. Well, Stephen's sneakiness knew no bounds. He'd secretly gorge on pizzas and fast food, thinking he'd fooled everyone. His dad once found not one, but ten empty pizza boxes hidden in his room. Stephen even called the cops on his dad over food. But later, the charges were dropped in exchange for, you guessed it, a large pizza. Like, who does that? And I see ten piles of empty pizza boxes in here where he tried to hide them from me. I said, let me tell you something, it's going to stop because I don't want to see that ever again. And then he says to me like, oh, all right, uh, well, what are you going to get me to eat now? I said, you serious, dude? I said, how do I know you just didn't have a pizza today and you want something to eat again? But he wanted his way. He used to threaten me and say, look, if I don't eat, I'm gonna call the police on you. But now, all this snackiness has to be stopped. After reaching Houston, he weighed a whopping 730 pounds. Dr. Now, hoping to see progress, put him on a strict 1,000 calorie diet. Fast forward three months, and Stephen's true colors shine through. He disrespected staff and started manipulating them for food and pain meds. Dr. Now had an oof telling him it was game over at the hospital. The story takes an even more dramatic turn next. Uh, and I apologize for it. Apologies mean, mean nothing. You come here for help, and at this point, there's nothing I can do to help you. So you're done here. I've been doing good and everything, please. And unless you have an emergency, you will not be admitted back. I've been good. I, I swear I apologize to everybody. If you want to stay in the program, you need to find a place to stay because you're not staying here anymore. So your father needs to set you up somewhere else. I don't have anywhere else to live. But it didn't change Stephen's tune. He missed appointments, ghosted Dr. Now's calls, and yes, ordered a large pizza and Coke the moment he got his new freedom. But when he overdosed on painkillers to get more meds from another hospital, Dr. Now confronted him. But the doctor's questions were met with non-seriousness and laughs. Oh boy, he definitely wasn't ready to change his life. Lost any weight? Well, I, uh, I, 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 I mean, I mean, you know. I see pizza in here. How many times you order pizza since uh, you've been here? Probably like two. Two, t two times that she knows. How many times that she didn't know that you ordered pizza? Don't look at her. Well, when I first got here to the apartment. After all the non-seriousness and ignorance, it was enough. 
Dr. Now, losing his patience, finally laid down the law, telling Stephen his painkiller and manipulation days were done. Get it through your head, he said, or you're looking at death or jail. Stephen Asante was truly the most ignorant patient to ever appear on the show. For now. Okay. You're done manipulating the system with me and Ma. So here's what we're going to do. I'm suspending you from the weight loss program. And you're going from here to a drug addiction program. Because right now, there's nothing we can do to wake you up. So you thought Stephen Asante was a handful with all his rule breaking, right? But wait till you meet Sheeny Murray. Sheeny Murray's story is all about saying no and pushing back, even when Dr. Now tries to help her get healthier. Shinny grew up as the only kid in the house. You'd think it's all about living the dream and being showered with love and attention, right? But things took a dark turn when she was just five years old. She was raped by her cousin. Poor Shane. The normal size child until the age of five. Because there was one time where we was at my uncle's house and I was molested by my cousin. I didn't know as a child what was going on. Reflecting on her traumatic childhood, just imagine her coming out of the basement in tears, running to her mom who immediately knew something was wrong and took her to the doctor. That's when they found out the heartbreaking truth of what had happened. From that day, food became more than just meals for Shane. It became her comfort zone and escape. But little did she know this comfort zone would become her prison. But I just hid all my feelings in. I started sneaking food right after that incident. Food made me feel better. It made me feel happy. So then I started putting my weight. And when I was seven, I was about 130 pounds. Years after turning to food for comfort, it wasn't a comfort anymore. Now, fast forward to her appearance on the show, and it's clear from the get-go that Shaney's heart isn't quite in the game. Despite the glaring health warnings and Dr. Now's roadmap to recovery, Shaney's commitment was, well, a bit shaky. Old habits don't go away easily. All right, I don't think you're grasping how dangerous your situation is, Shaney. With all the health issues you've got, you may not even make it to 30. Yeah. But hold on, it gets juicier. The plot thickens with Shaney's diet cheats. Even in a hospital setup with all the resources to pivot towards healthier choices, Shaney's husband turns into her partner in crime. Sneaking in pizzas and burgers, they were busted, sparking a not-so-joyful reaction from Dr. Now. Can you imagine the tension? You miss all your psychotherapy appointments, and then you come here pretending there is a serious issue to avoid facing the fact that you gain because you know you are overeating. But for some reason you think if you just hold to your lie, then maybe all these issues just magically will go away and you will lose weight. So seeing all this non-seriousness and ignorance, viewers were taken on a roller coaster of emotions, feeling everything from compassion to frustration over Shaney's resistance to follow the plan and her sometimes childlike ignorance. The real kicker? Shaney didn't get the green light for weight loss surgery. And let's just say she wasn't exactly thrilled about it. No, I know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you simple science. And you don't want to listen, so don't try to teach me medicine. Oh, I'm not trying to teach you medicine, but I'm trying to teach you about my body. Shinny's resistance kept on growing. Just six months later, Shinny started skipping her appointments, giving the psychologist the cold shoulder too. And when Dr. Now checks in on her, Shinny hits him with a curveball question about his beliefs in God. Then, she claimed, she doesn't need Dr. Now's help because the world's full of doctors. And just like that, she hangs up on him. Who does that to the one person who is trying to help you? In it, but do you believe in God? This is medicine. Well, I believe in God, and I believe that God is going to take me as far as he want me to. He put me on this earth. If he wants me to have this surgery, he will. And if he doesn't, I won't. But the story doesn't end there. Shaney takes to YouTube, becoming a vlogger to share her side of the story, claiming she's shedding the pounds on her own terms. Whether that's fact or fiction, well, that's up for debate. But one thing is for sure, Shanae was one of the most ignorant and defiant stars to hit the show. This is Techno Sartre, and uh, Shanae uh, missed her appointment, didn't show up, and I'm calling to find out what's going on. Once again, Shanae has missed her appointment, but this time she's not even answering her phone or responding to us. 
so it is unfortunate. After Sheeny Murray decided to leave Dr. Now's program and hit up social media to announce she's doing things her own way, it really makes us wonder if trying to help someone who doesn't want it can ever work. Lisa Eberson was struggling with past trauma, and her weight was the result of that trauma, as well as her ignorance. Lisa's life wasn't always dark. She had a happy and comfortable childhood until it was turned upside down by her father's battle with alcohol, which led to witnessing violence at home. Will Lisa find her path to redemption? My dad was an alcoholic. He wasn't at first. He was a real good dad when we were younger, but then he got into drinking and started beating on my mom and everything. So just that situation there made me turn to food. Food became a comfort to me because whenever I got upset or afraid or lonely, I knew it'd be there. But the trauma didn't end there. At just 13, something terrible happened to her. Unfortunately, she was raped by two men, leaving her with deep scars, both physically and mentally, pushing her into severe mental health struggles. This trauma would mark the beginning of Lisa's long battle with her own self. When I was 13, life changed a lot. I was at a friend's house. People I thought were friends. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, I got raped and it just happened. There's two different guys. I never told a soul, not even my mom. And I started eating a lot after that. I know I did, I did it on purpose because I wanted to get back so nobody ever touched me again. After enduring such traumatic experiences, Lisa turned to food. It became her safe haven, her armor against the pain and memories, but also her prison. Fast forward to 51, and she found herself bedridden, caught in a relentless cycle of compulsive eating. As Lisa's reliance on food grows stronger, one can't help but wonder if she'll ever break free from her self-made prison. It must be pretty bad if people don't want to come visit me. I mean, it's nobody's fault but my own that I put all this weight up and I wanted in this bed. I deserve to be happy and I deserve to be free. And that's all I want. That's why I want to change. As she was bedridden, she had to rely on someone. When we first met Lisa at the show, she was living with her boyfriend Randy, who more or less played the role of a caregiver and enabler. For three years, Lisa was confined to her bed, dependent on Randy for everything. He was her unwavering support system, handling everything from meals to chores. But was he more of a supporter or an enabler? Away from Randy. And I just feel like crap because we're not really boyfriend girlfriend. He's more like my caregiver. For the three years that I've been in bed, Randy's been helping me. Oh. Randy does basically everything for me. Babe, I'm getting hungry. And most of the time he does all the cooking. I wish I could help out a lot more. I know Randy wants that. Because of her weight and inability to move around easily, Lisa's initial meeting with Dr. Now was through a video call. At this point, she weighed in at 637 pounds, though Dr. Now suspected she might actually weigh even more. He recommended a strict 1,200 calorie diet plan for her, aiming for a 75 pound weight loss within two months. But will Lisa be committed enough to follow the diet? Okay. So, what is your weight? 637. You look like you could be a little bigger than that. So, how old are you? I'm 51. So, what is your mobility? I don't, I, you know, I can't get out of bed unless I get someone to help me get in a wheelchair. So, how long have you been in bed? Um, three to four years. You didn't think you should try to lose weight and get out of that bed? No, I guess not. Well, she wasn't too keen on following through, especially with physical therapy. On their second appointment, Dr. Now, trying to get to the bottom of things, even had a chat with Randy about his role in bringing her food. Randy's logic? If she asks for food, I'll bring it. Talk about irony. Why are you overfeeding that? Because she asked me to not get it for her. So if she asks you, you're obligated to bring it to her? Yes. What happened if she don't bring it? Is she gonna get up and go get it? Well, you have to talk to him because this is important. 
This is about saving my life. You can't just not talk to the man. I'm not to overfeed you. As her journey with Dr. Now progressed, Lisa's resistance only seemed to grow. Despite Dr. Now's efforts in giving them another shot, Lisa continued to cancel appointments, and when she did meet the dietitian, it ended with Lisa yelling at her to leave. Her attitude didn't improve with the physical therapist either, asking her to leave in a not-so-friendly manner. Sometimes when we get angry and frustrated, we want to blame other people and have them take Okay, it. this is over with. Get out. I'm done, I'm done talking to you. Give me my book. I don't blame nobody for anything that's happened to me. Lisa, is part of you afraid of getting help? Just get away from me. Okay. Get the out! Do not ever go back to my house again! After a series of refusals and missed appointments, Dr. Now's last-ditch effort to help with a physical therapist was met with the same hostile reception. Lisa's rudeness didn't spare even Dr. Now, showing attitude and abruptly ending his call. Who does that to the one person trying to help her? Motivate you. You have to decide to change your life. But I think what you're expecting is for someone else to do the work for you and giving to your manipulation. So Lisa, we have given you everything to change your life. What the f you gave me? I'm done. Goodbye. Here, I'm done. I'm done. <clears throat> but life has a way of throwing curveballs, and after Randy's passing during the COVID period, Lisa had a wake up call. She reached out to Dr. Now, ready to commit to her weight loss journey. It was a late realization, but as they say, better late than never. I seem to be doing okay. I'm glad to hear that. That's more positive than you usually answer. So I'm happy to hear that. But, well, how are you doing with the PT? Because they tell me you were cooperating when you got back home. But over the last month, you haven't been doing as much. And you've been telling them you're too tired and you can't do it. So they have to come back later. So what's going on now? Well, I've been trying. Despite Dr. Now's tireless efforts, not everyone manages to stick to the script, leaving him more than a little disappointed. Ryan Barkdahl was a classic example of this very dilemma. But let's not be too quick to judge. Walking a mile in Ryan's shoes isn't for the faint of heart. So when I eat, I never want to stop, and I never feel like I have to. Because I've never really felt like I was full. That's a feeling I never get, so I only stop when I run out. But if I didn't, then I could keep eating and eating and eating. By the time that I finish the meal that I'm eating, I'm already thinking about the next meal. Like when I'm eating breakfast, I ask my mom what we're having for lunch. But I need to know what's in line and what's next because I already can't wait to eat again, even though I just did. Ryan's life was far from easy. He was glued to his recliner chair, unable to stand or manage the simplest tasks. His journey to this point wasn't a quick one. It was a lifetime in the making, starting from his early days growing up with a mother and stepfather who, let's just say, weren't winning any parenting awards. That's why, folks, parental attention is important. But I didn't know I wasn't Jeff's real son until later on. It always made me feel like I was this burden or problem he wanted gone. And then my choice from that was to turn to food because it always made me feel better, you know? You feel bad, you eat a donut. And that's how I coped with a lot of things. I turned to food to get the comfort that I was looking for, and it filled that void so food became my best friend. So I started to eat a lot. With no one by his side at even his lowest points, Ryan's search pushed him towards finding solace in food, spiraling into an eating disorder that only grew with time. By 17, he was grappling with not just an alarming weight of over 300 pounds, but a severe drug addiction too. That's too much weight for a 17-year-old guy. When I started partying, drugs and alcohol with my friends. Freshman and sophomore year, I partied pretty hard. I smoked a lot, I drank more than any parent knows I did. I was still eating all the time also, and I just got worse and spiraled more out of control. And by the time I was 17, I was already up to 300 pounds. Yet hope sparked within Ryan, leading him to seek Dr. Now's help to reclaim his life. Starting his journey at a staggering 740 pounds, Ryan was all words about his commitment to change, but actions, not so much. A few months down the line and barely a dent in his weight, Ryan was still hovering over 700 pounds. Looks like he wasn't following the rules. Making excuses and blaming everything else for your situation. 
or if you're ready to wake up and get your life together. I'm ready to do what I need to get healthy, doctor, now. All right. So if food is destroying your life, then what seems to be issues with your eating? My eating habits now is just I like pastas. It's a big, like I'd say, kryptonite, I guess I would say. I guess something that I have a trouble with. I'm trying to... But despite no changes, Dr. Now handed Ryan another shot at redemption, setting a goal to get below 650 pounds. But history repeated itself with Ryan's weight stubbornly parked over 700 pounds, thanks to those sneaky cheat days. And when confronted by Dr. Now, Ryan's excuse was one for the books. The scale's malfunctioning. Seriously? He missed another chance. The scale's malfunctioning. It won't give me a weight. Is it malfunctioning or are you still over the weight limit of the scale? I know I made it to your goal, Doctor Now. I worked hard, so I'm at least under 650 pounds right now. So you believe you're under 650 pounds? That's correct. All right. But Ryan's story of ignorance didn't stop at dodging diet plans. He went full rogue, indulging in junk food. Each order a secret rebellion against his weight loss journey. And as if on cue, appointments started being missed, calls left unanswered, with Ryan choosing fast food over phone chats with Dr. Now. That's some next level ignorance. But now that I made it to this point, I need to go back to how I was doing the diet before my mom intervened where I had my cheat days because that got me through the first month of doing this and not being able to have that made the last couple months way too hard. So I'm letting myself go back to my way and enjoy one day a week of whatever I want. I just want to enjoy something that tastes good and makes me feel good and that'll get me through the rest of the week. Despite Dr. Now's patience and willingness to give Ryan yet another chance to stick to the diet and edge closer to weight loss surgery, Ryan's love affair with junk food didn't waver. He continued to order large amounts of junk food the moment he had the house to himself. He clearly wasn't serious about his situation. We haven't been able to get in touch with you and see what's going on. Yeah, so this is the first time I've seen you call because I have you on my phone under Dr. Now, so... I haven't had any missed calls from you. Well, you miss a lot of calls from me and my office. And so what's going on with you? You were talking about uh, coming down to Houston a few months ago, but you missed the appointment we had for you last month, and we haven't heard from you. And, but what happened with that? Uh, I didn't, my driver, um, ended up in the auto driver. I got it all taken care of now. It was Eventually, Ryan sent Eventually, Ryan's pattern of missed calls, ignored appointments, and unshaken commitment to junk food led Dr. Now to remove him from the program. His story surely is full of ignorance and non-seriousness. Ryan Barkdahl's story of missed chances and broken promises really shows us how tricky it is to match what we plan to do with what we do. Over the past few months, I have made a number of appointments to have video calls with Ryan, and he has missed all of them. I guess he's not picking up the phone. And it looks like he's doing that again today. I had a call with him right now, and he's not picking up again. So it looks like he is still avoiding me and playing games. A few days after he misses each call, he sends me different excuses. First, he said he had moved to Oregon to take care of a dying friend. 